Hi, this is Mark Cook for Cape Plains Magazine. If you think of the Comp Air name, you're probably thinking of a very large composite, maybe even a turboprop kit airplane built for big loads, going long distances with big people inside. We well, probably also wondered where Comp Air's been. The fact is the Comp Air has a brand new design they're going to be showing at AirVenture this year. And I had a chance to catch up via Zoom with new owner Michael Ryan, as well as designer Ron Luck. They brought me up to speed on what's going on with that airplane and the company and what to look forward to in the months ahead. Check it out. Let me know what, uh, what you've been up to in the recent past and, and where we're going. What, who wants to take it? We like to we call it quietly making noise. <laughs> now I can see. Yeah, we, we've actually it isn't that we've taken a hiatus. We've just worked on other projects, including yeah. doing some uh, uh, DOT work. We've done some work for a uh, DOD. Uh, we've got airplanes in all, of all weird places, in Nigeria now in the Nigerian Air Force. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we've been doing a lot of stuff like that. <clears throat> but also what happens is when you are in the business long enough and we've got hundreds of kits out. You wind up selling against yourself. Mm. And that's what we found ourselves doing is selling against our, our, our own product. Mm. People were buying used ones and stuff. Mm. So we, we decided we had to build a new, a new airplane. And that's what we're doing now. So we've designed a new one. You've gotten the pictures of it, I believe. <clears throat> so the new airplane is, uh, again, all composite, six mm. place. And, and it's, a, it's a bigger six place. It's not, it's not a tiny airplane. Mm. Um, I'm not getting any smaller. And, you know, <laughs> it's just true. It's my wife's cooking. I'm gonna I'm gonna blame her for that. So we specialize in bigger airplanes uh, because my our our philosophy has always been people would rather be comfortable and give up two three knots in speed to be comfortable because if you're gonna be in the airplane for four or five hours, which is what everybody wants to do to take those trips, right? You want to be comfy. You want to bring your your the wife and two kids and dogs and some baggage. So you really need a bigger airplane to do that. Mike and I at great length talked about it. What would we do? What should we do? Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided together that, well, let's build another six place, but a really nice looking strut, uh, not a strut based wing. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a strutless, really as aerodynamic and as modern an airplane as you could possibly build. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. uh, so the airplane's powered by a uh, Lycoming IO 580 mm -hmm. uh, with a Hartzell propeller. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's what we're building. So right now, and you guys saw it at Lakeland, we have, built the all the tooling is almost done we've mm -hmm. tooled the fuselage the fuselage exists it, mm -hmm. it, it, so we, we built the actual flight hardware mm -hmm. we've got the wings the wing tools are built now mm -hmm. uh, we'll be actually laying up wings here probably next week mm -hmm. so our plan is to fly the airplane before the end of the year we yeah. will fly it by the end of the year um so the good news is we're fully we are fully tooled up when we fly our prototype we'll have every tool ready to, to build it to go into production the other thing, uh, Mark, is we are intending to have a static display at Oshkosh so people can come and look at the plane, and uh, it won't be quite ready for flight testing until uh, you know shortly after Oshkosh. But people should be able to see the product at Oshkosh, which we're very excited about. Great, great. So, in in does it does it differ from sort of traditional compare designs in any fundamental ways, or does it sort of follow a uh, you know your design philosophy that you've laid down over the years? We changed years ago to be much, the, the, the original legacy aircraft were kind of boxy looking airplanes. Mm -hmm. They're great, they fly good, they, they do a good job. We switched over later in life in the Comper 12, the Comper 9, mm -hmm. Comper 11, and now the 6.2, which is a working, we don't know what we're gonna call it. 6.2 mm -hmm. just became a, it's like in computer programs, you got, you know, it, it's, it's six, but it's a different version. Right. So, you, you know, in programming, so I said, oh, I'll call it 6.2 for now. And, Mike and I are still arguing over names, um, but it's, it's a rounded fuselage. The intent of the airplane is it can be pressurized. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer a boxy looking airplane. Yep. The rounded fuselage lends itself more to uh, lighter structural uh, uh, components because, you know, the hoop stress and all of that. So we did that, got rid of the struts. It's a single piece wing. Mm -hmm. So the, the wing itself is 38 feet from tip to tip plus wow. one tip makes it 40 feet. Yeah. The reason we left it at 40 feet is that's the size of most hangars. They're yep. 41, 42 feet. So, yep. you know, and, 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 and to think about shipping it around the world, because we have, we've got airplanes everywhere. Yeah. You've got to be able to ship them. And those containers are only 40 feet. When we design the airplane, our philosophy is to des design around Park 23 utility aircraft. 
-hmm. So we design the airplane to be at least six G's positive, three G's negative, and all the intersections and everything are good to eight G's. So mm -hmm. when you see the way the wing is mounted, you'll 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 see you go, oh, okay, that yeah, that that's that's strong. So yes, the problem is we wanted big windows. Mm -hmm. We wanted to keep the windows in the side because people want to see out the window. That's mm -hmm. why they're flying. And to do that is tricky structurally, as you pointed out. And then the other thing we wanted was a cargo door mm -hmm. built into the airplane. We did that for a whole lot of missions. There's litters. You can put a litter in the airplane without having any, you know, you can load things in the back. We, we have a guy that we built a ramp for him and he puts a motorcycle in the back of his comp air. <laughs> Seriously. So, so, so that's the reason we, we went ahead with the big door. The other reason is that the, the door becomes an air stair door. So it folds down and, and you don't see that in experimentals, you know, you right. really don't. So right. yeah, the air stair mark is really, I think for, for, well, I mean, if you've flown with um, your, your wife, girlfriend or whatever, they, they don't like crawling up into an airplane yeah. usually. Yeah. And so this is really intended to be um, a convenience for family members and non aviators that, mm -hmm. that can appreciate that that's, that's really going to make the, the flight more comfortable. Definitely. And we're excited about that. Yeah, the other thing about uh, that Ron is alluding to is the the um, the design is is to part uh, twenty three specs, mm -hmm. but one of the options for this aircraft, which might be more appropriate for say Air uh, Air Force training, mm -hmm. uh, is a turboprop engine, a, a Walter six fifty horsepower engine. So it's really designed to be able to handle the stress of a much larger engine. Mm -hmm. So three hundred fifty horsepower piston light combing, it's going to be basically over over designed and yeah. a large large safety margin yeah i imagine that you guys have already designed in the capability for a lot more fuel capacity if you're looking at a turbine at some point as well yeah we we could accommodate 200 and about 250 gallons quite easily in there. <laughs> that's that's a lot for the piston airplane that's very especially, very generous it's, especially it's really hard on your credit card now yeah yeah tell me about it um so tell me a little bit about sort of the business side of this, where, uh, where are the kit's going to be built? Uh, are we going to, uh, are you going to be offering some builder assistance as you have done in the past? Sort of, uh, again, catch us up to speed uh, for, uh, for how uh, the company is going to be rolling out this airplane. Uh, yeah, so Mark, we're, uh, we're going to be um, putting kits together in uh, Titusville, and we, are, we have plans to expand uh, in the uh, space adjacent to the current hangar we're, we're housed in. Uh, to allow uh, expansion of the production, and there will be a, a builder assist program. We, you know, we obviously haven't launched that yet for this this plane, but we will uh, come next um, late winter, spring when the kits start rolling out. So we we do intend to provide that, and there are actually, um, I guess, uh, Ron had been uh, recently talking with uh, a country in South America that wants to get kits uh, built down there for their air force. So we would we would help them with their construction and get a, a program set up down there for them. Uh, let me circle back around and uh, uh, Ron, tell me a little bit about the sort of the performance envelope of the airplane. What are you guys looking for? What are you projecting for? You know, things like cruise speed and uh, rate of climb and uh, and payload and stuff like that. I know, you know, obviously you still have a lot of flight testing to do. You have to finish the airplane to do flight testing, but uh, I know you probably have a, quite a bit of numbers that you've uh, you've sketched out. What do those look like so far? <clears throat> We're anticipating cruise speed of about 170 knots, mm -hmm. nearly this the cruise speed of a Cirrus but a big, a physically bigger airplane. Mm -hmm. um, climb about 15 to 1600 feet a minute. We should be, we'll be able to maintain that. Mm -hmm. Take off, basically the way I'd like to describe it is anywhere you'll take a 206, we'll take this airplane. Mm -hmm. So we have a very, very similar take, uh, uh, profile in that respect as a 206. In addition, the, the uh, useful load in this aircraft is much larger than the 206. It's 2000 pounds. Mm -hmm. So if you fill up the tank 90 gallons, you have about almost 1,500 pounds of, of uh, full fuel payload, which is pretty remarkable for that size aircraft. Well, we try to utilize what material the, the material that's most suited for any particular application. Mm -hmm. We will have an option in the airplane to make it 100% carbon fiber if the mm -hmm. owner wants. Of course, that stuff's a little more expensive and harder to work with. Mm -hmm. So we will be able to do 100% carbon fiber, or in, in the case of our prototype, it's a hybrid of carbon and uh, S-Class. Mm -hmm. 
So the carbon is used in places where you need really high strength, maybe spar caps and stuff like that. Exactly. Not just the strength, the stiffness, because hmm. you know the lung, Young's modulus of elasticity of fiberglass is lower than that of carbon. So hmm. you know we use carbon where it's where you really ha need the carbon fiber and fiberglass where you don't. In terms of you know if, if you're going to have, it sounds like a pretty high end airplane. You have uh, you know high end equipment here. What uh, what are you guys looking at at costs for kit, and what do you where do you think uh, you know a builder is going to end up at the at the end of this in terms of uh, investment? Well, initially we're going to ask one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the kit, which is an all inclusive kit. Mm -hmm. um, first, you have to remember or, or re visualize this is a big airplane. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, we have twice the surface area of a Lancer, for instance. Mm -hmm. So you know, charging one hundred and fifty thousand is not it's not that much, and that that's that's everything but the engine prop avionics. Uh, paint, battery, and upholstery. So mm -hmm. those are the things that the, the owner has to supply. What will we have in it? Depending on how, it, really it's the instrument panel and the engine that drives the price. You know that. Yeah. Uh, so what you'll have in it, double that. You're going to have 300 grand in the plane when you're done. Thing is, this will be about a 1500 man hour uh, build. Mm -hmm. To get the basic Five airframe and systems together. and everything together. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's exclusive of paint and interior and stuff like that right. typically, yeah. but to get the airframe flyable 1500 ish hours. Yeah. And we will have, we, I, I don't like to copy, but we'll do a, uh, a four week to taxi program. We won't be able to get it done in two, like somebody yeah. else does, <laughs> but we'll do a four week. We'll have a program similar to that, that yeah. if they, you know, we, we can do that two four week to taxi thing. So, uh, so just to, to refresh timeline looks like, uh, a, um, you'll have a, a physical airplane there, not yet flying at Oshkosh at AirVenture coming right up. Uh, aim to get uh, into flight by the end of the year. Flight test probably over, you know, well, you guys are in Florida, so you can fly all, all, all the year long practically. And uh, so uh, should we look for, uh, you know, final article sometime uh, next, uh, next Sun and Fun? Is that what the goal is? Oh, I painted, upholstered, everything, yeah. Yeah, great, great. It's not a risk and it's not an issue for us to just go right into production of this aircraft because we've done it so many yep. times and we're, we, we will be 100% tool. So okay. provided that the airplane flies, and it will the way we think it will. Uh, then, yeah, we're ready. We'll be absolutely ready for production. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start transitioning um, after the first end of the year, or at maybe by the end of this year, to uh, production um, pathway. So we're we're gonna be ready to go and hit the pavement running when the flight testing is completed and we've got a got all the, the kinks ironed out. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. We'll look forward to uh, to seeing what, what you uh, have in the flesh at uh, Air Venture this year. I'll keep pestering you guys. Keep me in the loop on how your flight testing goes. And uh, okay. when you're ready, we'd love to come down and fly it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Mark. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.